All right, so this is chapter 18, Arrival at the Inn, in which we are following our Cornelian family in their aftermath of the disaster of crashing out into the ditch. They're going to be, as per usual, embedded items throughout, so be able to listen out for that. And let's go ahead and begin. Rider in Fosa Haribat. The minivan was sticking. This is the verb hario hareare, but you can see the BA, that's the first thing I noticed, and the second thing I noticed is the T ending, which is active, so the minivan was doing the sticking in the ditch. Cornelii per viam iban. So the Cornelians were going through the road towards the inn. Calpo and Calponis. Calpo is, of course, the innkeeper, and the Calpona is the in itself, but the stem for both of them is spelled the exact same, C-A-U-P-O-N, so you have to look to see what kind of declension it is. Secondly, ebont comes from the irregular verb that you find over here, eo ire, and when it comes to regular verb, you've got to memorize it, so eo is it, it is ayunt, I go, you go, he goes, we go, you go, they go, versus ibon, ibas, ibot, I was going, you were going, he was going, and ebont, they were going, and that's the Cornelians, which is, of course, going to be our subject towards the motel, which was erat, another irregular verb, eramaras erat, was not far, prokul means far in the distance, away of Cornelia, who no longer known yam, was crying, imperfect again, was walking with Euclides. Whenever you see the word kum, if it is next to an ablative word, it is the preposition that means with. And, of course, Euclides is in the ablative because kum requires it to be so. Now, often, students will see the word pueros and they'll just begin reading. They will, of course, translate boys, but you cannot do that. The rules of Latin do not say, say the definition of the words as you come to them. I look at pueros and I do not see boys, I see accusative, so that's a direct object. So I need to go find my subject, which is here, the last word of the sentence. Cornelius was calling back again and again. So he called back, was calling back, revocabat, again and again, the boys, because they were running pry ahead, or in front of Aurelia, quam quam, although she was not wanting another irregular verb from nolo, nole, but remember that wolo, nolo, and ferro, and you can see them over here, they all want to be third. They are not. Now, it's not a third conjugation, not a third conjugation, not a third conjugation, but they want to be, which is why you find EBA, 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 EBA as the infix, the middle thing of their imperfect tense. So, it says, Aurelia, although she still was not wanting to spend the night in an inn, slowly she was walking with Cornelius. Again, cum plus an ablative is going to be obviously with. And your first word that you're going to be inputting is ebot, I-B-A-T, spell it correctly. And uh, there it is that you'll be putting in for the easy 100. Soon they were approaching towards the inn, the motel. First declension. They saw they were seeing widia widere widi wesis. They saw, they were seeing nobody. Name and M. The nominative of name and M would be name O. It looks like it has an O ending, but it doesn't. It just happens to end with the letter O. Nominative accusative. However, they were hearing, they heard the voices of men. Hominum is from the word homo. It is, of course, where we get the word homo sapiens, is what we are, human. And here would be homo, hominis, homini, hominem, homine, homines, hominum, which is what we see there in the genitive plural. It is not accusative, but genitive plural. Suddenly, subito, two dogs curl themselves. Now, the word say can mean himself, herself, itself, or themselves. How do you know which one it means? You look at the subject. It's what we call a reflexive pronoun, and it reflects back onto the subject. So since we're talking about dogs, dogs verb themselves. If it were Marcus, Marcus verbs himself. If it were Cornelia, Cornelia verbs herself. The word say would not change, but you know what it means because you look at the subject. Suddenly two dogs hurl themselves out of the door, a Yanua of the motel. And they barking. Le plantes. We saw this first in chapter 7. A word like it. Laborantes in which 
It is from a verb, but it is an adjective. We call these participles. And they would all look in the following way. It would have ns, just like Wallanes, Clemens. Here in the case, it would be latrons. But then it would have latrontis, latranti. So just like it's Clemens, Clementis, Wallanes, Walentis, Amens, Amentis, it would be whatever ns, in this case, latrons or laborans, laborantis. And here we can see, obviously, the dog's latrantes. And it is a, what we call a present after participle translated to verbing. And barking, this is describing what kind of dogs, and barking ferociously, they seek, they look for, they attack. And this verb even means pedo petere, the Cornelians. Note here as well, you've got lente. One of the ways in which, obviously, you can make an adverb in Latin is to take the adjective, take the ending off, and add a long e. The other way is what we see here. You do the same thing, but instead you add an e tear. In English, to make an adjective to an adverb, we just add an ly. Your second word is latrantes. L-A-T-R-A-N-T-E-S. It's the m participle modifying canes. Immediately, Sextus runs away. We've seen him in this sort of situation before. He's a scaredy cat. Marcus stands motionless. This is not the word statim, but the word stat from sto stare, steady status, to stand. Immobilis, modify Marcus. Immobilis appears five times in its chart. You see it, fake ending one, fake ending two for the feminine, ending in the genitive singular masculine, genitive singular feminine, that's four, and then there it is again. But here it is that immobilis because it is modifying Marcus. That is not an ending but a fake one. Motionless Marcus stands. Aurelia terrified screams. Cornelius himself does nothing. So we have a combination of tricolon crest canes and you have alliteration. Statum, who gets next to Statum, immobilis Marcus, Aurelia pentecrex smarter. And here we have the difference between stop and immediately and the verb stop. They just share letters. Cornelius himself does nothing. Cornelia, however, does not run away, but she stretches out her hand towards the dogs. Your monium is your hand. Okay, Mark, hey, look, Marcus, in the vocative, because you talk directly to him, taking off the U.S. and adding an E. He canes la trat modo. These dogs only bark. Look at the difference between the verb la trant and the participle la trantes. La trant has a stem, that's the vowel, and then the ending, the verb ending, ost bustis inti. Here, it is merely that nt happens to be the last two letters of the stem, and then a third declension ending on it. Nilum es periculum, there is no danger. Eke sexte, look sextus, they move their tails, their caudas. The students always mistranslate this and say the tails move. Tails aren't doing a darn thing, I see as ending. It is accusative. Don't look at the word and see the definition. Look at the word and see the form. They, the dogs implied, move their tails. In other words, they wag their tails. That's your third item. Caudas. C-A-U-D-A-S. Spell it correctly. Ipso tempore. In the ablative. By with because of coming in on at the time itself. A homo obesis. A fat man, so we obviously get the word obese, appeared. D -d 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 -d. Now why am I saying appeared, did appear, has appeared? Because I see the perfect stem. The U of the V sucks, and E is the it. It's a perfect verb. At the door of the inn. So a fat man appeared at the door of the inn. Homo does not have an ending O. Again, homo is that form that you see right here. It's the variant form, but it is a nominative subject, the man. We are called homo sapiens, sapiens, because that's the word for wise. It is our species. They have been other homines, the plural of which Homen, that of course is the stem, and then you have that. So for example, the first uh, of these kind of creatures that stood on two legs was the Homo erectus. The first of these species that used tools was known as Homo habilis. And we, the smartest creatures ever to be on the earth, are the wise humans. So we are homines, and then to make this a plural, sapientes is what we are. 
So, a fat man appeared, a fat man who called did, 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 did back, did call back, has called back, perfect tense with a V, the dogs. Salute, hospites. Hello. Welcome. Be healthy, literally, is what I say to y'all every day. Guests, do y'all want to spend the night in my inn? Again, a regular verb from Walla Walla. Here, remember that when it means here has a long eye. Short eye would be just simply this. That's the plural of this, which of course in English is these, as in these dogs. But here, pun intended, it is going to mean here. So, many citizens, and it's praclari citizens, many famous citizens, have spent the night. You see the perfect stem of the perfect vowel, or the perfect letter? V sucks plus E is the it. Once upon a time here, even the legate, the ambassador of the emperor, did spend the night, has spent the night. So he is obviously trying to entice these Cornelians. He recognizes them immediately by their clothing. They're wearing the boys and the father, the tunica laticlavia. Their toga does not give them away, but that tunica with the purple stripes does. Salve me, Apollodore. Hello, my Apollodorus. Remember the word? Me is vocative from meus. For whatever reason, it follows not the rules, but the rule usually reserved for if the word like Cornelius. Or, let me rewrite it as goes. And so here the. Or, oh, there we are. Or an alias. You get rid of both the U.S. and the I if it has an I as the last letter of the stem. And for its vocative, what you would then do, taking off both the U.S. and that I, you replace it with an I. Well, here you do the same thing. You do take off the U.S. and the E. And then, of course, the vocative then becomes me, and that's what you see there. Modifying Apollodore, which all you have to do there was simply take off the U.S. and add the E that you normally do for the vocative. So, hello, my Apollodorus. Euclides interrupted, did, 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 did interrupt, has interrupted. The V sucks plus the E is the it for the perfect tense. Verbed, did verb, has verbed. Quid agis, what are you driving? Not as in, like, what car are you driving. That's just like saying, how you doing? May Hercule, OMG, the innkeeper responded. Now, the innkeeper, again, is nominative. It's the variant form. That is not an ending. And also, let me quickly tell you about responded. Now, this is from the verb respondeo. And then, of course, respondere. And then the, of course, third principal part, respondi. Note that the present stem and the perfect stem are identical. There's not a singular difference between them. And so here, to create a present verb, this is second conjugation, so that long E is the vowel. Then you have the T ending, or he, she, or it, which eats the macron, or respondet, versus what you have here, the perfect stem, and then just the perfect ending. So he responds, he is responding, he does respond. This form, the only difference is the difference between the I, which is a part of the ending, the perfect ending, versus the E, which is the present vowel. Responds, responded. So the innkeeper responded. Nisi arrow, unless I am mistaken. And so in this way, Nisi means if not or unless. Unless literally in English means if not. Unless I make a mistake. If I do not make a mistake, I recognize, agnosco, agnoscere, my friend Euclides. Remember, this is an inceptive verb because when we recognize something, it's an instantaneous action that cannot continue. No, Naras, you do not make a mistake. You do not err, E-R-R. -R. Your fourth word, by the way, is right here in line 16, Nisi, N-I-S-I. Euclides says, I see you, I the happy one. In English, we want to say, I happily see you, or I am happy to see you, but that's not what the Latin says. You take the subject and you modify it with the adjective. Because the minivan of my genitive master sticks in the ditch, motionless, describing minivan, so that is a fake ending nominative that you see there. It is necessary to spend the night here in the motel. Dolio. I am sad. Dolio dolere. To be doleful. If you're sad with someone, 
You give them your condolences. The innkeeper says, again nominative, I am sad because the minivan is in the ditch, but I rejoice, I am glad, Gaudio, because y'all are coming now, ad meam caponum, to my motel. Entrate, entrate, omnes, enter, enter all. Your fifth and final word is calpo, C-A-U-P-O, in the nominative. So good luck in studying, fill in those things at that free 100, and do well on the multiple choice and the vocabulary. Thanks.